Here's the thing. To a lot of people, 8 o'clock in the morning is time for getting up, getting dressed, and going. But to the kingfish, 8 a.m. is just a halfway mark and a good night's sleep. At least that's the way it was till this morning. Salma, answer the telephone. Where's the telephone, George? Well, answer the door then. It ain't the door, it's the alarm clock. Alarm clock? That's what it is. The reason you didn't recognize it is because you ain't heard it in 15 years. Well, what do you mean, send that thing off this hour today? Scaring a man to death. I'll be so jumpy all day, I won't be able to hold a pool cue. George, I made an appointment for you to see a man about a job. Now, get up. Now, wait a minute, dear. Uh, you can't do that. It's an invasion of privacy. It's unconstitutional. Here's your pay. It's a violation. <laughs> now, get up. And I'm telling you, George Stevens, if you don't take this job, you don't have to bother coming home tonight. Now, you go see Mr. Hanson, the sales manager of this insurance company. I think if there's one thing you can do, it's sell. All right. And here's 20 cents car fare. Make sure you go straight to the insurance company. Well, where do you think I'm going on 20 cents, Honolulu? <laughs> So you see, Mr. Stevens, our hospitalization policy is easy to sell because it is very much in demand. Yeah, sounds good, all right. But uh, how much commission do I make? Ten percent. In other words, for every policy you sell for $50, you keep $5 and the company gets the $45. Now, wait a minute here. Let's get this thing straight. If I sell the policy for $50, you get $45, and I don't get but five. That's right. Hmm, you're thinking here. Now, if I had my own insurance company, I could keep the whole $50 for myself. Couldn't I, Mr. Hanson? What are you talking about? And if I only sold policies to healthy people who ain't going to have no accidents, that would be 100% profit for me. Just a minute, Mr. Stevens, what are you getting at? <laughs> Mr. Hanson, this is a wonderful country we living in. I walked in here without a job. And two minutes later, I walk out, president of my own insurance company. <laughs> Good day, sir. Here. Kingfish, what's this multi-million dollar insurance company thing? Oh, just what it's saying, Andy, I done multi myself up a few millionaires. And we organized the hospitalization insurance company. Uh, wait, I'll tell you more about it just soon as I finish making out these your claim checks to our uh, policy holder. Let's see the, uh, Mr. Harry Wingrove, Spring Index Finger. Eight hundred and sixty-seven dollars. <laughs> James Montgomery, two hundred and sixty-four dollars and eighty-two cents. Uh, what happened to him? Oh, wait, let's see here. Oh, he nicked himself by shaving. <laughs> oh, smoke. Ain't that an awful lot of money, King Fish? Well, Andy, I know he padded it a little, but we don't check no claims under a thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> as long as you're busy, I'll go on out. But wait a minute, Andy. It just occurred to me that you might be interested in taking out one of these hospitalization policies. Mm, no, Kingfish. I wouldn't be interested. But now look, Andy. The Stevens Hospitalization Insurance Company don't coax or use no high-pressure methods to tell anybody. <laughs> now, if a man says that he ain't interested, we respect his word. All I want to know... Uh, I'm glad you asked me, Andy. Now, there's some wonderful features about this job policy. You is protected from all accidents, even explosion and collision. Yeah, well, what's the difference? You're dead either way, ain't you? Yeah, but that makes a difference in the burial clause. We know what to do with you. Now, in a collision, there you is. But in the 
in an explosion, where is ya? But the only thing is... And that ain't the only feature of this here policy, Andy. You hurt my foot. Oh, I'm sorry, Andy. I didn't realize it. Now, Andy, let me give you a typical case. Now, suppose you was up in the Empire State Building, say, way up on the 79th floor. Oh, that's high, all right. And as you were leaning out the window, you lose your balance, and you fall from the 79th floor down, down to the sidewalk. Well, what about it? Then my company will pay you $15 a week uh, benefit as long as you live. <laughs> they will, huh? Yeah, and another nice little feature of this particular accident. The time of the payments don't start from the time you hit the sidewalk. They start from the time that you leave the window. I earn money on the way down, huh? <laughs> Listen, King Gage, uh, this sounds like a great policy, but I just ain't interested. I ain't never had no accident in my life. But Andy, suppose you don't have no accident. Suppose you just get sick and need an operation. If you take out one of our policies, uh, we pay all your hospital bills, medicine, and everything. What do you want, Lightning? Uh, I'm not Lord Burma over the corner there. I wonder could I get a place to... Yeah, Lightning, come on. Hurry on over there and get it. And then get on out of here. And now, Andy? <laughs> well, how do you like that? The dirty prospect sneaked out on me. Did you tell Mr. Andy no insurance policy, Mr. Kingsley? No, Lightning. Andy said he ain't sick, ain't gonna be sick, ain't gonna have no accidents or nothing. Oh, me. I guess nobody wants to buy hospitalization insurance when they're feeling good. The only time a person wants to buy a policy is when they think they're going to be sick. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> I think you done give me an idea. Idea? I must be smarter than I think I am. <laughs> What are you going to do with that, Mr. Kingsley? Lightning, do you remember the large brother who was taking his examination for X-ray technician? Uh, yes, sir. Well, there's an X-ray he took of me when he was just practicing. Is that you, Mr. Kingsley? Yeah, that's me, all right. You look down there. Even the initial on my belt buckle come through. Uh, G.S. G.S. You're still. Yes, sir. Lightning. This could be anybody's x-ray. Even Andrew H. Brown. <laughs> ah, any mail for me, Lightning? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Ed. Ain't no mail for you. Oh, uh, well, I tell you, Lightning, I'm excited. Glad you dropped in, Andy. <laughs> I tell you, I ain't interested in no hospitalization insurance. Look, Andy, I wouldn't send you a policy if you obey me. I got more business than I can take care of. And the only reason that I am happy to see you, I want to try out my new x-ray equipment. Uh, x-ray equipment? Yeah, I mean, my company's doing such a tremendous business that we ain't got time to send the prospects out to be x-rayed. So from now on, I'm going to take them myself. And you just want me to help you test the thing? That's all, Andy. Well, ain't no harm in that, I guess. Well, Andy, come right on over into the X-ray department. <laughs> this the X-ray machine? Yeah, Andy, uh, this is one of the new small types, uh, like they use in the Million Eyes Brothers uh, clinic. Oh. Yeah, now stand right over here, son. Uh, yeah, stand right there. And we try the machine out. Yeah, see how it works here. Mm, that's 
Ooh, it's dark in there. Uh, Andy, uh, open your mouth so we can get a little more light down there. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks very much, Andy. I'll just run into the dark room and develop the thing.
I'm very much concerned about this high state of nervousness you're in. In fact, it might be a lot more convenient if you did go to the hospital. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Brown. Our policyholder. 
Uh, I want to see uh, this hospital on the approved list. Uh, Olympic Hospital. Yeah, it's on the approved list, all right. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that, all right. Now, Andy, uh, who is your doctor? Uh, Dr. Joseph Wilkins. See, <laughs> doctor, let's see if he's on the approved list. Watson, Weston, Wilson. Yeah, here we are, Andy. Dr. Joseph Wilkins. Uh, is he approved, Kingfish? Yeah, Andy, you sure picked a good one. Uh, better look at his background here. Academic work taken at USC. Medical course, four years at UCLA. Four years of surgery at CSH. I heard about them other two, but uh, what is CSH? Chicago Slaughterhouse. Oh, oh. You mean I didn't pick myself a doctor instead of the slaughterhouse? Well, uh, what's wrong with that? Any doctor that's good enough for the Longhorns ought to be good enough for you. Yeah, maybe you're right about that, all right. Only thing is, Kingfish, I was a little squeamish about having a cow, Doctor. But, Andy, look on the bright side. Now, in case you got hoop or mouth disease, he is the one man that will know how to locate it. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, now, getting back to your doctor here. Yeah, Andy, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah, he's an outstanding man. He is, huh? Yeah, he graduated CSH Magna Cum Sorta. Yeah, he was a top man in his class, uh, hacking and sighting. Yeah, well, I'm glad I'm only here for tests and examination, because it ain't never come to none of that hacking and sighting. Dr. Wilkins is going to be here in about 15 minutes. Yes? Yeah. Oh, Calhoun. Calhoun! Well, if it ain't of all the... Well, look who... What's going on here? Well, I come up to see Andy. He's sick. Now, ain't that a coincidence? I just got a job here in this hospital as orderly. I'm assigned to Dr. Wilkins, and they tell me they got to make some tests in here. Yeah, that's right. They're going to test me. Gee, I'm so glad somebody I know is going to be around. Yeah, I'll be with you all the time. Because they tell me Dr. Wilkins got to make quite a few tests. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to use the same instrument that you did good old CFH. Immediate surgery. Oh, doctor. 